All right, welcome back to Sports Betting Truth, where it is my goal to give you actual sports betting advice without the touting, shilling, hype, or false promises. Now, with all this coronavirus garbage going on, not enough time to be betting, but plenty of time to be building out things for the future. Use this time wisely to prepare. So today's video is starting a new series that I call Intro to Power Ratings, where I'm going to show you how to build various power rating systems that are meant for beginners to help you get your feet wet in terms of learning how to build power ranking systems for various sports. Today's video is going to be about the simplest power rating system there is, and that is the ELO system. The ELO system is very easy to learn. It's a very beginner level rating system, but it's also necessary to learn because it's kind of the foundation that you use to build out other more complex rating systems. Before you can do that, you have to learn the ELO system. It's simple, but it's vital to learn. So let's get started. Now with the ELO rating system, there's strengths and weaknesses here, and I will go through both. Uh, the first strength is that, is that it's simple and easy to build. It's very easy to learn, it's very simple, but it's necessary, like I said, to learn how to do more complex rating systems down the line. The first rating system I ever built was an ELO system for college basketball back in 2004, so it was my first foray into this rating system concept. You also only need wins and losses for your stats. You don't need to gather a lot of stats for this one. The only thing you need is really score, I guess, to determine who won and lost a game. But you need every team's wins and losses for the season or the stretch of time you're measuring. And lastly, it's still pretty good at measuring win probabilities. That's the whole point of the ELO system is measuring whether a team has a probability to win or lose. But weaknesses. Margin is arguably as important as wins and losses. A lot of people will argue that that's more important to determine which team is better than simply wins and losses. For example, which is better, a team that wins every game by one point or a team that wins 18 of their 20 games by 50 points but lost two games by one point? Well, the ELO system is going to treat that first team better as a more dominant team, and that can be a problem. Second is that it's useless for estimating the spread or margin estimate. So if you're trying to use a system to bet against a spread, an ELO system is not for you. It's really only for money lines. And lastly, it's too simple, especially for sports like baseball. But the simplicity, like I said, is a good thing to help you learn the concepts of power ratings and everything. So don't, don't be afraid. Don't dismiss the system. You know, you need to learn it. You need to know it because it teaches you the core concepts of rating systems. But back in the BCS days in college football, pretty much every power rating they used for their BCS computer formula was a concept and a spinoff of an ELO system because they banned using margin of victory and other stats for their system. So everything was based on simply wins and losses. So they were just more complex versions of ELO systems. So for today's lessons, we're going to use the NFL um, because I feel like that's the simplest sport to learn off of because it doesn't have a lot of games and therefore it takes a shorter time to process and it's also easier to reference. So I went to sports reference and pulled the 2019 schedule and put it in this nice table right here. So in this Excel file I'm going to demonstrate, I have three tabs. I have the schedule tab, which has all the 2019 games all the way to the Super Bowl. And I have the team averages tab. This is where we're going to calculate all the averages. And here are all the columns I have. They might seem complex right now, but I'll explain them going forward. And then the league averages tab where we're going to calculate the home and away split outs and see if there's any home advantage. So I do want to say that I already have all the macros and everything built out just so I knew it all worked before I filmed the video. So I'm just going to be transcribing the macros that I have on this computer right here. But follow along, it shouldn't be too difficult. So the first thing you want to do is see if you have your developer tab enabled. And if you don't, go to File, go all the way down to Options, and then go to Customize Ribbon and make sure Developer is checked. And when that's the case, you want to click Insert, and you want to do a button, do that, and then click new but we're going to name this raw calculate new whoops so we'll we'll rename this button from button four to raw and the first macro we're going to do is just calculate the raw win percentages for everybody pretty simple right so go into visual basic and we're going to type sub raw calculate and then we'll assign the macro in a bit so the first thing we're going to do is declare our start and end variables for the loop we're going to do when we loop through the schedule. So a loop is basically a macro function that goes line by line and parses all the data line by line and we want to loop through the entire schedule so we can assign the win percentages to everybody. So we're going to declare a couple variables first. Variables are basically names that you can call later on that store a value. So for example, if I say this variable 
equals one, whenever I reference this variable in the future, it will always return one, which is our value. You can assign values to it, static or dynamic values. So in order to loop through the schedule, we need to have a start variable, and it starts on line two, so our start line is going to equal two, because we start on line two right here. And then we need an end variable. What is the last line? Now we could go all the way down to the bottom of the schedule and go to Super Bowl, which is game number 268. But the thing is, a lot of these lists have more dynamic endpoints where it's not well defined like that. So we're gonna teach ourselves a good habit and make it static or dynamic, dynamic, my bad. End line equals sheet one, which is the first one, master schedule sheet one right here. Sheet one dot cells, rows dot count, a, so we're gonna count how many rows are in column A, so right here, dot end, x, l, up, dot row. So basically that's going to calculate the final line, which will be 268, and store the number 268 whenever we call end line. So before we start our loop, we're gonna to wanna to clear off the first five columns of our team averages sheet. So what we're gonna do is sheet two, which is our team averages sheet right here, or if you don't want to do that, you could do sheets team averages if you don't want to do sheet two. Either way works, but we're going to do sheet two dot range A2 E999 dot clear contents. So that's going to clear everything in cells A2 through E99. So basically this giant box right here all the way down is going to clear. And then we also want to do the same thing on our league average cells as well. So we're going to do sheet three dot range B2, since we don't want to get rid of home and away, E999 dot clear contents. So that will clear everything. And then we're going to declare one more variable, which is new line equals one. And the reason we're doing it as one is because we want to start at one. And then every time we add a new team to this list, we increase it. We'll get to that in a second. So now we're gonna start our loop. There's two different ways you can do loops. You can do a for loop or a do while loop. For this one, we're gonna do a for loop because our endpoint is static, meaning we know that the end line is not going to change or that a condition doesn't have to be met to exit the loop. So we're gonna go one by one. So we're gonna do for start line equals two to end line. So that means it's going to loop through start line two one by one until it reaches end line 268. And then we want to do next start line to close off the loop and then hit tab. So what we're going to do is we're going to call five variables, which will represent all five lines or all five columns in the schedule. So the first one is going to be loca equals sheet one dot cells start line, which is the line that the loop is on comma one dot value. And the reason it's one is because the location is referencing column one, right? And then just copy and paste this four times, and then we're gonna call this variable away team. We're gonna call this variable home team. This one's gonna be called away score, and this one's gonna be called home score, and we're gonna store the values as so in those variables. So the away team is in column two, so two. The home team is in column three, so three. The away score is four, and the home score is five. See? So now we have all five variables called and stored line by line. But now we need to create a function. So how are we gonna do that? The function we wanna do is going to want to call wherever the team is located on the team averages tab. But we won't know that, so we need to do a function for that. So what we're gonna do is first call a function. This function is going to be called team lookup, team param, team parameter as string. But aha! Anytime you're using a parameter on a function, since we're gonna call the function in here, we need to declare our variables that we're gonna feed as a parameter to team lookup, which will be away team and home team. So we need to dim them. Dim away team as string, dim home team as string. We need to declare them so we can feed them into the team lookup function as a string. So this is also going to be a loop. Start line equals two, end line equals, we can copy and paste this right here only it's gonna be sheet two dot cells row dot count a instead of sheet one dot cells. And then output line equals zero. I'll get to that in a second. And then we're gonna do another for loop for start line equals two to end line, next start line. And then we're gonna just call this, I guess, team sheet two equals sheet two dot cells. Remember, we're referencing sheet two, start line one dot value. 
So just assume that all the team names are right here. Like let's say this one's gonna be Green Bay Packers, right? And it's gonna loop through until it finds the team that was fed into it, the team param as string. So if we call the function as equals Green Bay Packers, we're gonna loop through until we find the line that features Green Bay Packers in column one. So if team sheet two equals team parameter, team param, then. So an if statement. An if statement basically says if this is true, so if team sheet two equals team param, then do this. So execute everything below in between the if and the end. Output line equals start line, meaning the output line is going to be the line we found it on. And then team lookup, aka the name of the function, equals output line. But what if it doesn't find the team? What if it's not there yet? Then we're going to close it like this. Team lookup equals output line, which is going to still be zero, right? It's either going to be zero or going to be the line that it was found on. So that's our function for team lookup in the sheet two. So we're going to declare away lookup equals team lookup away team. So what it's going to do is it's going to search sheet two for the away team and return the line it's on. If it's not on a line, it's going to return zero. If so, if away lookup equals zero, then and if new line, remember this line right here, equals new line plus one. So we're going to increment the new line by one and put it in the new slot on sheet two. Away lookup, we're going to change that from zero to new line. And then sheet two dot cells away lookup one dot value equals away team. So we're going to put in column one of the current line that it's on the name of the away team. And then we're going to put a, either a win or a loss in that slot. So if away score is greater than home score, aha, but there's ties in the NFL too. Crap, I did not account for that. Don't worry about it. Like I said, this is just a demonstration, all right? Even though there's ties in the NFL. If away score is greater than home score, then sheet two dot cells away lookup. Remember the slot that the team is on. Two, column two dot value equals. So we're gonna change column two for the team of the slot line equals sheet two dot cells away lookup two dot value plus one. So we're adding one win to that column. Else, so else, if the away score is not greater than home score, then sheet two dot cells away lookup three dot value equals sheet two dot cells away lookup three dot value plus one. So we're instead of adding to the wins column, we're adding to the losses column plus one. And then we are going to add to column four, which is the total games, two dot cells away lookup four dot value equals sheet two dot cells away lookup four dot value plus one. We're gonna increment that either way. It's just the count of games, okay? So we just did that for all the away teams and now we can do the same thing for the home teams. And all we really have to do is just copy and paste home team lookup, away team lookup. All we have to do is copy and paste and just change the ways to homes and vice versa. It's the same thing only with our home teams. Just change this to home, change this to away, home, 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 Pretty self-explanatory, home, home. All right, so now we have that in there. Okay, so that's gonna tabulate all of the teams. And now what we wanna do is also tabulate the league averages. So if loca equals H, so if the game is a typical home away game, there's only like, I think, five neutral site games in the NFL last year, three in Europe, one in Mexico, and one in Super Bowl. And if, if loca equals H, then, I forgot the then. And now we're gonna do this. If home score was greater than away score, then sheet three dot cells. So now we're referencing sheet three, our league averages tab. So sheet three dot cells. So we're gonna append the home column to two dot value. So if the home team won in a typical home away game, then we're gonna add to the home team win column two, two, two up, two down, equals sheet three dot cells to two dot value plus one. And then we can just copy and paste this and do the same thing for the away tab, but three, three. So we're appending their loss column. So away column, three for losses and row three for away. And then we can do else sheet three dot cells, two, three dot value equals sheet three dot cells, two, three dot value plus one. Copy and paste, 
three, two, three, two. And then we're gonna do this. We're gonna add to the number of games. And that's gonna be two, four, and then three, four. And there. So that's gonna tabulate everything in our raw calculation. So team by team and home and away to calculate home advantage. So now we need to calculate win percentages. So we're gonna do another loop. Only this time we're gonna loop through all the teams that will be right here. So we're gonna call start line equals two. And our end line is going to be that. Copy and paste it only changed to seat two, but we're still gonna tabulate row A for our end line. And then for start line equals two to end line, next start line, come up and tab. Wins equals sheet two dot cells start line two dot value. So we're tabulating this column right here where the wins are at. And then games equals sheet two dot cells start line four dot value. So we're tabulating how many games were played. And then sheet two dot cells start line five. So we're gonna add to column five, which is gonna be our win percentage, equals wins slash games. And that's it. Now you could simply just do an Excel function equals B2 slash D2. You could, but it'll take a lot longer to calculate when you run the macro. So it's a lot easier just to do it through this way. It's quicker. You don't have to worry about clearing the tabs or anything. And then we want to do the same thing, calculate win percentages only here. So we don't need a loop for this. Sheet 3.cells 2.5.value equals sheet 3.cells 2.2.value slash sheet 3.cells 2 four dot value. So basically this one divided by this one equals that one. Pretty simple. And then we can copy and paste this and just change the row. And that is our raw calculate macro. So here's how it looks when we run it. Hopefully it works on its first go. We gotta assign the macro to raw calculate. And let's hope it works round one. Nope. Oh, I forgot the end if, uh, duh. All right. There we go, all right, so now we have all the team averages calculated, their wins, losses, games played, and their win percentage, right? So eight, di eight divided by 16 equals 50% for Chicago Bears. Good, so everything looks good. Let's see what this looks like. All right, so you can see there's a slight home advantage. Home teams won about 52.1% of their games. So a slight home advantage, but it does exist. Now what, right? We have a win percentage, so if we were to rank this, right, the Ravens have the best win percentage, but were they the best team? or was that a product of an easy schedule? Who knows, right? So let's sort that A to Z. And now we're gonna do what I call the adjustments. The adjustments are what separate a raw win percentage into a more filtered win percentage, right? That takes into account strength of schedule and all that. So in order to do that, we need to loop through our schedule again, and this time we're gonna reference the win percentages of every team and calculate an average mean delta win percentage. I'll explain that when we calculate it. So let's go back to our master schedule. We're gonna create a new button and we are going to call this adjustment round one. So we can honestly go back to our first module and copy and paste the beginning of this macro right here, because it's gonna be looping through the same thing. So we can copy and paste all that and get rid of that. So copy and paste those lines right there. And from there, we can go to home lookup equals team lookup home team. That's where things start to be different than the last macro. And now we're gonna start referring to these columns in here. So away win percentage equals sheet two dot cells away lookup five dot value. And then we can copy and paste this and do the same thing for home. Home. So we copy and pasted all that, right? But what we wanna do up here is we wanna call our um, league averages. And we can also get rid of one of these. So what we're gonna do is clear columns F2 to G999. So we wanna, we wanna clear these two columns. And then we're gonna call some variables to refer to league averages. Home winning percentage, so what's the home win percentage? Well, it's gonna be this, so we're gonna call cell 25 and store that there, equals sheet 3.cells 25.value. And then away win percentage equals sheet 3.cells 35.value. And then league average equals home win percentage plus away win percentage slash two. I know what you're thinking. You're gonna be like, well, it's gonna be 50%, right? The league average win percentage because either a team either wins or loses or ties, so everything's gonna be 50%. Yes, that's 
That is true. But we're teaching ourselves good habits here. Because wins and losses, yes, that's going to always sum up to 50% either way. But when you're doing the same thing down the line in more complex systems where you're using stats and not wins and losses, not everything's going to equal zero. You're not going to know what the mean is. So you're going to calculate it. So we're teaching ourselves good habits right here for the future. Yes, it's going to equal 50%, but that's not always going to be the case depending on what stats you're using. And then home advantage equals home win percentage minus league average. So we know it's going to be 52.1 minus 50%. So 2.1% away advantage equals away win percentage minus league average or minus 2.1%. So good. We declared our variables to store our league averages for. And now we can go down here and say away diff equals away win percentage mi minus league average. So how did the away team's win percentage differ from the league average win percentage? Home win percentage minus league average. So for example, the Cardinals 31.3% win percentage minus 50% league average win percentage is 18.7. So they're minus 18.7 versus the league average. All right, so now we can do an if statement. If location equals H, so if this was a typical home away game, which most of them were, then sheet two dot cells away lookup six dot value equals. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna append this column right here. We're adding the adjustments. And the adjustments is basically the average differential win percentage for every team they played. So we're summing up the win percentage differentials for all teams on the schedule and coming up with a overall average equals sheet two dot cells away lookup let me move this over for you six that value plus the home diff so how do the away team's opponent win differential differentiate plus home advantage so we're adding on the home advantage here as well for the away team just to bump up the win percentage more to compensate for playing on the road and then we're going to do the same thing but opposite home lookup, home lookup, away diff, and away advantage, even though it's technically a disadvantage, but it's gonna subtract that from their, from the home team to compensate for the advantage they're getting at home. So the overall question we're trying to answer here is what would a team's hypothetical win percentage be against the average team on a neutral field? So that's what this these adjustments are for. We're adjusting for all that, so we can normalize everything and equivalize everything and then make sure we're comparing everything apples to apples. But if it was not a typical home game, so a neutral site game, we can just copy and paste this and we can just get rid of these at the end. There we go. And then we can say next start line. So we calculated our adjustments and now we're gonna calculate our new win percentages, our adjusted win percentage. So to do that, we're gonna do a for loop start line equals two, end line equals sheet two dot cells, and then we're gonna go do another for loop. For start line equals two to end line, next start line, and then adj equals sheet two dot cells, start line six dot value. So basically, this we're referring to this right here, their adjustment calculations. Games equals sheet two dot cells, start line four dot value, so the number of games, and then sheet two dot cells, start line six dot value equals adjust slash game. So the average delta of all the teams they played is going to go into column six. And then sheet two dot cells, start line seven dot value equals sheet two dot cells, start line five, so we're calling their win percent, their raw win percentage, plus adju adjustment slash games. So plus the delta divided by games average. And that's the macro for adjustment round one. So come into here, we can change this one to ADJ1, and then we can assign the macro to adjustment round one, and let's hope it works. Looks like it did. Excellent, so the Arizona Cardinals their opponent had an average delta of plus 0.51% above 50%. We add that number onto their raw win percentage to come up with their adjusted win percentage, which is now bumped up to 31.76%. Let's see if we can find anything drastic. Okay, here's the drastic one, the Eagles. 
Their raw win percentage went from 52.9% to 47.51%, which makes sense. They played in the AFC East, weak division last year, so they're going to be downgraded. But the thing is, is that we don't want to stop there. We want to do a second round to adjust the adjusted win percentages. You can really do this as many times as you want. For the sake of this video though, we're gonna do it twice, but you can adapt this as many times as you want and adjust for as many rounds as you want, but the more you adjust, the smaller and smaller the changes are going to be. So you really wanna do it as many rounds until the numbers kind of stabilize and stop changing. So that's how I do it. So a lot of times that's, it depends really, like as little as three adjustment rounds, as many as like 10 or 11. Uh, it depends on how much data you're working with and how much you're willing to, how much time you're willing to take to do it. But for the sake of this video, we're going to adjust twice. So what we're going to do is create a new button. And what we can do really is just copy and paste this entire thing right here from adjustment round one. And there we go. And we're going to call this adjustment round two. We could just change all the numbers and everything. But in order to make this macro infinitely adaptable, we're going to add three variables. We're going to call this one call new add j equals nine, call new win percentage equals eight, and call old win percentage equals seven. So what we're doing is we're going to assign three variables. The first one, call new add adj, is going to be, whoops, I got this backwards. This, this should be eight and this should be nine. So call new ADJ is gonna go here, column eight. Call new win percentage right here is gonna go right here, column I, which is nine. And call old win percentage, which is here, is gonna be the old win percentage we're referring to, which is column seven. And really, if you wanna add subsequent adjustment rounds, all you have to do is copy and paste this macro and just change th these three numbers to represent the columns you're referring to for the new adjustment round, and that's it. That's what I mean by infinitely adaptable. So then all we need to do is go down the line and just change the static numbers to our variable numbers. But first, we wanna clear the range for our new range, but with dynamic variables, you can't just do it like that. You gotta do it like this. Sheet two dot cells two col new ADJ comma. Sheet two dot cells 999 col new win percentage clear contents. So this is just referencing to a dynamic range, which is going to be these two columns right here all the way down to 999. That's how you do it when you can't call the letters. Awesome. All right, let's move forward. So we're going to go down the line and change all the static numbers to our variables from these three. So column five is where our old win percentage is, right? So our old win percentage is going to be call old win percentage, call old win percentage, right? And then we scroll down six is where our new ADJ is going to be. So call new ADJ. So we can just replace all the sixes with this. There we go. And then we go down here to the win percentage calculation, replace all the sixes with call new ADJ. Replace the seven with call new win percentage and replace the file with call old win percentage. And that should really be it for round two. So let's do this. Change this text to ADJ2. There we go, let's see if it works. Whoops, forgot to assign the macro. All right, let's see if it works. And it looks like it did. Awesome, so now we have a second round of adjustments. So the Cardinals got further adjusted upward. Let's see what happened to the Eagles. They got further adjusted downwards. Not good for them. But after two rounds of adjustments, we should have a lot more different of a win percentage than the raw win percentage for every team because we've adjusted it twice. So I'm going to stop the adjustments there, but you could totally keep going and do more rounds. But let's start to analyze this. So let's rank every team's win percentage based on the raw win percentage equals rank, comma. We're going to select this, E2, but we want to do number sign E2 number sign E999 and then zero. And the number signs are so the, that reference column does not change when we drag it. And by drag it, I mean this. And now we have it conditionally formatted. So if we were gonna rank these one through, one through zero, we have number one, the Ravens, who had the highest win percentage, the Chiefs and 49ers tied for second, and on down, the worst team, the Bengals. Okay, 
So that's how they rank after adjustment round one. Let's see how they ranked after adjustment round two. So we can copy this and just change this to G. And then we can drag it down. So after the first round, the 49ers are on top and the Chiefs drop down to two. And the Bengals still at the bottom at number 32. The Eagles, they're a good example. They went from 13 best win percentage to 15th. And then how did things look after the second round? Well, we're just gonna change this to I. The 49ers still on top, but we, the Bengals went from last place to 29th and the Redskins took their place and the Giants went from 29th to 31st. The Eagles went to 19th. So the Eagles after two rounds of adjustments dropped six spots, which again makes sense. They play in the AFC East or the NFC East, a lot of bad opponents in that league and not a strong schedule outside of that as well. So let's calculate how much each team's raw win percentage changed to adjusted. So equals E2 or I, I2 minus E2. So the 49ers actually went up 2.98%. They did play in a pretty strong division with the Seahawks and the Rams and the Cardinals weren't terrible for a last place team. But which team had the highest leap from the raw round to the first round? It was the Panthers and the smallest was the Giants. Actually, this is the second round. So the Panthers increased 4.82, which is the most, and the Giants and the Jets, both New York teams, pretty much all the East teams, because those are the weakest divisions last year, had the smallest drops, or the largest drops. And how did the ranks change? Equals L2 minus J2. Well, the Panthers improved, here it'll be easier to do it this way, equals minus, minus one times L2 minus J2. That way, teams that actually improved their rankings are seen positive. So which team jumped the most spots? Well, you can see them right there, the Falcons. They went from having the 17th ranked win percentage in the raw to the 12th ranked in the adjusted. Again, they played in a pretty tough division with the uh, Saints and probably played a tough schedule outside of that as well. So the team that dropped the most was the Jets. They had the 17th best win percentage at seven and nine, but when you factored in the adjustments, they dropped all the way down to 27. The Cowboys also a big drop as well. So you also wanna know what this column right here represents, the round two adjustments. It's also the same thing as strength of schedule. That's exactly what it is. So we can rank that too. Rank, so we're gonna rank off of column H. The adjustments are the same thing as strength of schedule. How, how much of a strength of schedule did you play? And it's really the strength of schedule that influences your upward adjustment or downward adjustment of your win percentage. So smallest, the toughest schedule was played by the Panthers and Falcons, two NFC South teams, Seahawks 49ers. So the 49ers not only had one of the best win percentages, but they also played the toughest schedule as well at number five. So that's why they were adjusted even higher. And that's why they finished ranked number one in the final adjustment, even though they lost to the Chiefs. When you factor in the strength of schedule adjustments and everything, they were slightly higher, but strength of schedule, number one was the Panthers, the worst was the Giants and the Cowboys and the Eagles. So that's why the Cowboys were adjusted downward so much. Yes, they went eight and eight, which was a average win percentage, but since they played such a weak schedule, they got adjusted all the way down to 22. So our ELO power rating is basically this number right here, the win percentage. What this number is measuring, as I pointed out earlier, is what would the hypothetical win percentage be for a team against the average team on a neutral field? So if the 49ers were playing a team with a 50% win percentage on a neutral field, according to this ELO ranking after two adjustments, we could expect them to win 81.92% of the time. So what can we do with this information? Well, there's two things we can do. I'm gonna create a new tab and we're, we're just gonna call this like a simulation, I guess. Neutral field and everything. So let's re-simulate the Super Bowl, right? San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. And we're gonna V look up their adjusted win percentage. B3 and then table array, this right here. Make sure to put our dollar signs in there. And then index number is going to be wherever their adjusted win percentages. So column nine, which is I, nine, false. So that returns that number right there. We can format that to look at like a percentage center that. And then we'll do the same thing for the chiefs. Excellent. So we have both their win percentages right there. And so we can be like, okay, well then what? Well, the league average obviously is 50%, right? So we got 50%, 81.9%. So what we do is we calculate a differentiation equals 
d3 minus d2 and then equals d4 minus d2. So we got our two differentiations. Let me zoom in on this so you can see it a little bit easier. So the league average is up there. So we're gonna do an expectation calculation here. So this column is their win percentages and this column right here is their deltas, right? Versus the league average. And now we're gonna calculate their delta deltas. So equals E3 minus E4, and then equals E4 minus E3. And then we're gonna add that number onto the league average equals D2 plus F3 equals F4 plus D2. Let me just format it like this. And then that's our expected win percentages for a neutral site Super Bowl game. It's 49ers 51%, Kansas City Chiefs 49%. So let's say uh, we have a random Super Bowl matchup on a new or a random game on a neutral field, right? So let's say uh, Indianapolis Colts and let's say the New Orleans Saints. So on a neutral field, according to our ELO model, we could expect New Orleans to win about 82.5% of the time over the Colts. That's how our ELO model projects win percentages. But what if we were doing this with a home advantage built in, right? So we would just take this number right here and add in our home advantages, right? So let's just create a new column called advantage right here equals E2 minus average these two numbers. Remember, we know it's 50%, but we're teaching ourselves good habits in case we're using a different stat that's not wins and losses that we know is going to equal 50%. And then the same thing right here, equals E3 minus average. There we go, let me just format it like this. So that's our advantage. And so we just take this number right here, equals G3 plus the away disadvantage equals g4 plus the home advantage so if this was a home game and not a neutral site game saints win percentage gets bumped up to 84.6 let's do another example dallas cowboys and let's do the new york jets remember the cowboys lost to the jets in new york well this would be about 54.8 percent for the cowboys so this is pretty decent for projecting win percentages right of course the limitation is margin and everything but that's another video for another time. This is the simplest power rating system there is ELO. This is how ELO works. You can do this for really any sport, even baseball. Like I said, it's not best for baseball because you have the factor known as the starting pitcher that you have to factor in, but a lot of other sports, it's not bad. So the other thing we can do is we can do also do a linear regression as well. So we're gonna V look up the power ratings for each team here, and then we're gonna call this diff. Okay, equals V look up. B2, comma, team averages. Don't forget your dollar signs in front of the letters and numbers here. And then I, so nine, false. Away rating, and then we're gonna do the same thing with C2. And then diff is going to be equals F2 minus G2. And then we can just drag this down all right, and so what we're gonna do is do, we're gonna do a linear regression. And you do it like this. You go to data, data analysis, regression. Input Y range is going to be our diff, or wait, no. Okay, we wanna do a new column, my bad. We're gonna call this win. So if the away team wins, it's going to be zero, and if the home team wins, it's going to be one. So if D2 is greater than E2, zero, one. Awesome. So now we can go here and we can go to data analysis, regression. A Y range is going to be this, the win column. And the X range is going to be the diff column. And then we want to click labels and we can do line fit plots and residuals. Hit OK. Obviously, as the differential gets higher, meaning if the differential is positive, that means the away team had a higher rating. If the differential is negative, that means the home team had a higher rating. So when we come here to our regression line, flip pl line fit plot. As you can see, the win probability, remember one equals home team win, zero equals away team win. So as you can see, it's a linear regression. So as the number gets higher, the win gets lower. Remember higher number, away team has a higher rating, zero, so with this line fit plot, we can take these two numbers right here and take them over to our little simulator. And let's do it like this. All right, so in order to measure 
our predictions using the linear regression method, what we do is we have our intercept right here and our coefficient right here, which I took from this right here, coefficient, intercept, and I'm gonna copy and paste these ratings. And then I'm gonna calculate a differential, which is D7 minus D8, there we go. So we're gonna calculate it based on the bears. Remember one and zero are based on the home team winning. So zero, the home team lost, one, the home team won. So we're gonna do it like this, equals A7, our intercept, plus our coefficient A8 times the differential, which is D9, and that is the Bears' chance of winning, and then the Packers will be the opposite, equals one minus E8. There we go. So if we apply this right here, it's not that much of a difference from our ELO calculation, the linear regression in ELO, not that much different. So let's try a different matchup, Kansas, all right, 58.5 for the Chiefs in our ELO method and 57.8 for our linear regression method. Again, not that much different. Let's try one more. Bengals, 89.9% for the Vikings here, 89% there. So not much difference, but you can still use the two in tandem if you're using a model or anything to see if there's a relationship. But that pretty much wraps it up. That's how you do a simple ELO rating. You can do that for any sport. As long as you have the schedule and the scores and the wins and losses, that's all you need for an ELO system. It's best to start with this. This is how you can learn the basics of power ratings and you can advance from here. But if you can't get this, you're not gonna get the future methods either. So start with this. If you're just starting out with power rankings, get the hang of this, try this out, and then you can move forward. I have another video coming up that's a little bit more complex than this. It's the same concept and everything, only we're gonna use scores instead of wins and losses. So stay tuned for that. But until next time, this is Sports Betting Truth signing off.